Vincent Enyama is widely regarded as one of Africa's greatest and most reliable goalkeepers, a distinction he earned over the course of a career laden with silverware and unforgettable moments. Right from his national team debut against Kenya in May 2002, it had been obvious that he was destined for greatness. But it was when he made his World Cup debut against a star-studded England side that the world really took notice. It came down to one moment, and Yama facing a Paul Scholes shot from point-blank range. As Scholes lined up the shot, almost everyone expected it to be a goal, in typical Scholes fashion. But Enyama was not having it, making a brilliant save. In that moment, a star was truly born. At club level, Enyama quickly became well-established. The starting goalkeeper of Nigerian champions Enyimba, who conquered Africa in 2003, and then repeated their triumph in 2004. For all his excellence, however, Enyama had a glaring weakness. He was horrible at saving penalties. It was ironic because Enyama was actually a great penalty taker, something which was notable all through a career in which he scored over 20 goals. In fact, he notably scored a penalty kick in the final of the 2004 CAF Champions League, giving Enyimba a 1-0 lead. In the same game, he was subbed off just before the end for Dele Ayenugba, his deputy, nicknamed the Cat because of his incredible penalty saving record. Ayenugba came on and made a great penalty save, helping Enyimba seal their second consecutive African title. This wasn't the first time either. Same thing had happened in the semi-final. This story, however, begins in January of the same year at AFCON. Enyama went into this tournament as the undisputed number one. In the first game against Morocco, he made an incredible save on a Maran Shamak shot that kept Nigeria in the game while they were a goal down. They ended up losing 1-0, but that moment served as a reminder of how great a shot stopper Enyama was. As the team progressed through the rounds, he continued to show why he was first choice over Austin Ejide, his main rival, and Greg Etafia. In the quarterfinal, they eliminated Old Foes Cameroon, with Enyama making a decisive save while one-on-one -on -one with Samuel Eto, with a score at 1-1. His worth to the team at this point was not in doubt. That win set up a huge semi-final clash against host Tunisia, who had been impressive all tournament. This game turned out to be a very tense game full of drama. The young Nigerian team, led by veterans JJ Okocha and Mwankwo Kanu, were dealing with the pressure of facing a vocal and passionate crowd that created a very difficult atmosphere. Still, they held their own, weathering the early storm. In the 66th minute, they won a penalty through Kanu. JJ Okocha stepped up to take it and saw his effort squeezing after a strong touch by Tunisian goalkeeper Home Nigel. The referee, who had spotted a problem with the penalty, ordered a retake as the crowd cheered. This time around though, Okocha played the penalty to the other side, sending Boom Nigel the wrong way. The Nigerian team continued to deal with the Tunisian onslaught until the 81st minute when Ziad Jaziri won his country a penalty after contact with Sheyi Olofinjano. Replays showed that he initiated the contact himself, however. It was the era before VAR, so there was no option for a review. Penalty it was. Tunisian captain Khaled Badra stepped up and converted the penalty with a ferocious shot. And Yama was barely even in it, watching the ball sail into the net. 1-1 it ended and the tension skyrocketed in extra time. Eventually, the game went to penalties. It was already well known that Enyama was not great at saving penalties, but Nigeria still hoped it could pull off something. Tunisia's Boom Niger was much more confident facing penalties, so they were already looking like favorites to advance to the final. The shootout started and Nigeria were the first to blink. Young Osaze Odemwingi, who looked overwhelmed by the pressure before taking his penalty, took a poor kick that was easily saved by Boom Nigel. This was the second round of penalties 
so there seemed to still be hope for Nigeria. What they underestimated was just how poor Enyama was at saving penalties. For the rest of the shootout, it was almost as if he was not even there. The Tunisians converted the rest of their penalties at will, with Karim Agui taking the fifth penalty to send his country to its first final since their 1996 defeat to South Africa. Enyama, meanwhile, came under a lot of criticism, not solely for his inability to stop penalties, but for his perceived lack of competitive spirit during the crucial moments. It seemed as though he didn't display the necessary determination or boldness required to make a stand in the shootout. Many expected a stronger display of resilience from the Nigerian goalkeeper in such a pivotal phase of the game. It was the kind of weakness that was a bad fit for tournaments, where tough knockout games were often decided on penalties. Sometimes goalkeepers relied on pure luck, but it usually involved them picking a side and just diving in hope. Nyama did not show that level of blind faith, which worried everyone. There was already talk of possibly replicating the Enyimba process of sobbing him off before shootouts ahead of the next tournament. Things went from bad to worse for Enyama that year when he was involved in a terrible accident, one which claimed two lives and left the driver of the bus he was in unconscious. Late in the year, he walked from the bench after being subbed off as Dile Ayenuba helped Enyumba win two shootouts to claim the CAF Champions League title. Enyama actually had a great relationship with his deputy, exemplified by Ayenuba always seeking him out first every time a shootout was over and they were triumphant. That final also had his national team number two, Austin Ejide, on the other side for Etoile du Sahel in front of a huge Nigerian crowd. Ejide's performance in the shootouts mirrored Enyama's struggles during AFCON, dampening enthusiasm among spectators regarding the prospect of replacing Enyama before shootouts, unless of course the replacement was Dele Ayenuba. Nonetheless, the debate ensued on whether it was a sound strategy to consider solely taking Ayenuba to the next tournament for shootouts. As a fierce competitor with an incredible mentality, Vincent Enyama took a chance to improve and address his weaknesses head-on. Despite the conversations and criticism, he embraced the opportunity to silence doubters and detractors in the upcoming 2006 AFCON tournament, showcasing his growth and shutting down all discussions about his previous struggles and shortcomings. The 2006 tournament again saw him come in as the undisputed number one. He would be coach Austin Eguavon's guy for the tournament. However, there was a significant change this time. His deputy at Enyimba, Dele Ayenuba, who was incredible at saving penalties, was included in the tournament squad. Many speculated that this meant Enyama would be subbed off before any penalty shootouts. In fact, many expected it. It made perfect sense considering how successful this decision had been at Enyimba. Enyama kept clean sheets in the first two games before conceding in the final group game against Senegal. Tunisia had finished second in their group after losing 3-0 to Guinea in their final game, meaning a repeat of the 2004 semi-final was on the cards. There was no better occasion for Vincent Enyama to right the wrongs of 2004 and redeem himself. As always, Tunisia was a tough team to face, still boasting the core of the team that won the 2004 AFCON. They were defending champions. Nigeria had knocked out the previous defending champions in 2004 and were looking to do it again. The team was still reeling from its failure to qualify for the 2006 World Cup and needed to make up for that humiliation. The game began at a frenetic pace. Within three minutes, Tunisia had an opportunity. A delightful long ball was taken on the chest by Ziad Jaziri in behind the Nigerian defense, but Enyama was quick off his line to block the resulting shot. That was the first warning sign. A minute later, Tunisia got another shot on target. A tame shot by 2004 hero Francilio dos Santos from outside the box was well collected by Enyama. A further minute later, Nigeria had their first chance of the game. Obafemi Martins ran onto a through ball down the right. 
his cross was parried by Bum Nigel into the path of Victor Obina Nsofo, who rifled a shot into the net. Less than six minutes in, Nigeria were in front. But as it happened in 2004, Zia Jaziri won another penalty. This time, it was not controversial. Joseph Enahiri had clearly tripped him from behind. This was Enyama's opportunity to redeem himself. Many Nigerians feared the worst. Immediately, the referee pointed to the spot, expecting nothing of Enyama considering his history facing penalties. But the man from Akwai Bomb was inspired, ready to banish the demons of his 2004 showing. Clayton stepped up to take it for Tunisia, sending the ball to Enyama's right. The goalkeeper stretched all the way and saved it, sending the Nigerian fans into raptures. Many could scarcely believe it. When did Vincent Enyama start saving penalty kicks, especially with such authority? What they did not know was that the drama had just started. At the start of the second half, Tunisia finally equalized. A delicious cross by Boazizi was met at the back post by Karim Agui, scorer of the winning penalty in the 2004 tie. For the rest of the game, both teams pushed for the winner. Heike Ogwemamdia, Obafemi Martins, Steven Makinwa, and Obina Nsofo all coming close. The game ended 1-1 as it had done the last time and it went into extra time. There wasn't much goal mouth action for all 30 minutes with both teams cautious, apart from when Kanu had a stinging shot brilliantly saved by Boom Nigel. Once again, the game went to penalties. To everyone's surprise, just before the game ended, Enyama was not subbed off. Dele Ayenuba remained on the bench. Even though Enyama had made a brilliant save from Clayton's penalty earlier, many were still skeptical. The safe option was to go with Dele. Eguavon was taking a huge risk leaving Enyama on. He would be blamed if Nigeria did not advance for not making that sub. Enyama on his part wanted to stay on. He saw this as an opportunity for redemption and he was no coward. He wanted trust and respect, not the existing perception of him being too unreliable in these moments to help his team. He wanted to change the story for good. The shootouts began. Joseph Yobo of Nigeria took the first kick. He hit it to his right, but it was saved by Boom Nigel. It was a good height for the goalkeeper. Next up was Hamed Namuchi of Tunisia. Anyama's new method came into full view now. He would be mobile across the line to distract the taker while staying fully focused, watching every muscle on his face to try to figure out where he would take the penalty. He would stare them down. Namuchi stepped up and roofed it. And then Taitao took the next penalty. He struck it well also to Bumnijal's left. 1-1. Gwememdia was next, sending Enyama the wrong way. At this point, Eguavon must have been wondering why he had not made that sub earlier. Even though Enyama was more mobile than he had been in 2004, he had not been anywhere close to the Tunisian penalties so far. Yusuf Ayila took the third penalty for Nigeria. He hit it hard and high, striking the bar. Nigeria had now missed two of their three penalties. Things had gone from bad to worse and they were in trouble and on their way out. They looked down and out. If Tunisia scored, they would be 3-1 down in the shootouts with their opponents needing just one more goal to win the game. All eyes were on Enyama. This was it. This was the time for redemption. This was the moment. His country needed him to pull off some miracles and save them. Eguavon needed him too. He had trusted him after all, and his neck was on the line. Adele Chedley was the next man to step up for Tunisia. And Yama was a picture of concentration, feeling the weight of expectation and pressure on his shoulders. He stared into Chedley's eyes, seeking clues for where the man would hit his penalty. Chedley stepped forward while Enyama moved left to right to left again. He hit low down to his left side and Vincent Enyama saved it. The job was not done yet, but this was a big moment for the Nigerian goalkeeper. 
his story and a historic script were being written. Now, Obina and Sofo was up. The young star took a confident penalty to the side no one before him had attempted to go, and he scored. Enyama was up once again, facing a penalty by Selim Benachor, and once again he had to make a save. He repeated the same process as the last one, and Benachor sent his penalty to the opposite side. But Enyama made a save once again, this time with his leg. The Nigerians in the stadium went crazy. They could not believe this was the same guy from two years before. They were right though, he was not the same guy. This was a more confident and established than Yama, one who had worked hard on his craft to improve and be an asset for club and country. This was a Yama 2.0. The fifth penalty went to Obafemi Martins. He stepped forward and hit a tame shot. Um Niger almost saved it, but Obafemi had hit it too high for him to get a stronger hand on it. Obafemi seemed to have changed his mind mid-shot, causing him to slightly scoff his effort. Nigeria could breathe. For the first time since the shootout began, they were ahead. Pressure was now with the Tunisians. The player to take their fifth was Clayton, who had his penalty saved by Enyama during the game. He made no mistake this time though, picking the opposite spot and sending Enyama the wrong way. Now it was sudden death. The heavily sought after John Mikel Obi took Nigeria's sixth. Memories of his near miss from the World Youth Championship quarterfinal from the year before flooded many Nigerian minds. He had just barely scored that penalty. Could he do it now against Boom Nigel? Yes, he did. Even though Boom Nigel got close to it, Mikel had taken it with the right amount of power. And then Boom Nigel himself stood up and picked the ball up. He was taking the next one for Tunisia. A couple of steps forward and he hit it hard to his left, sending Enyama the wrong way. Now, Vincent Enyama was a great penalty taker, and in this moment, he seemed to feel personally affronted by Bunigel's penalty. He decided to take the next one. This was a man at his most fearless, ready to take responsibility and help his country win. As Bunigel waited to face him, Enyama stooped low to tie his boots. Then he stood up and sent Bunigel the wrong way. It was the best penalty that any Nigerian player had taken so far. And Yama's expression was priceless. He stared down everybody with a pissed off look that said, How dare you question me? and walked back to the post. Then Amir Haj Masoud took Tunisia's penalty under huge pressure. It went low and hard to his left, and Enyama almost got a hand to it. But just like Mikel's penalty earlier, it had the right amount of power. The pressure was mounting. The tension in the stadium was heavy. At this point, no Nigerian player wanted to take a penalty. They kept Boom Nigel waiting while everyone wondered what was going on. Nigeria's captain, Joseph Yobo, who had missed his own kick, stepped in. He urged Kanu Wanko, the most experienced player, here to take a penalty to step up. Kanu had shied away from penalties since his penalty miss in the 2000 AFCON final had cost Nigeria the trophy. But Yobo was not having it. The captain shouted at him, telling him that he could score it and the pass did not matter and encouraging him to go up. Kanu took a long walk forward, skepticism obvious on his face. He seemed to be looking over to the bench, hoping to be saved from having to do this. Eventually, he took the penalty and sent Boom Nigel the wrong way. The relief on his face was obvious. Tunisia sent up their own captain, Riyad Bouazizi, to respond. He stepped up, looking unsure, as the pressure also hit him hard. Enyama, fully confident in goal, was staring him down. Bouazizi opted for his right side, hitting the ball high, but Enyama was there. He made a brilliant save, ending the game and helping Nigeria advance. In that game, Vincent Enyama saved four penalty kicks. He had made saves in the shootout after Nigeria missed two penalties and were on the brink of elimination. He had also stepped up to take a high-pressure penalty that his teammates were scared to take. This was a complete performance, one that showed the character and mentality 
of a goalkeeper who would go on to become arguably Nigeria's greatest ever and one of Africa's best ever. The redemption arc was complete. That night, Vincent Enyama showed the world that he was a mentality monster. What a comeback story.